Hello, people. I am Ginny Metherill, and I'm a fourth generation witch. Although, am I? I call myself a traditional fourth generation witch, but I might not be. I want to look at this. This also, most likely, applies to you as well. So, here is my video on what is a traditional fourth generation witch. This video came about because a client of mine said to me, what do you mean by being a fourth generation witch? What does that mean? I suddenly thought, well, I thought it just meant that my great grandmother, who's the only person that we can remember in this generation as far back to, was a witch. And so it was my grandmother and my mother. And therefore I can say that I'm a fourth generation witch. However, I think I've got a lot more generational witchcraft behind me. And so I wanted to discuss how that was with me and whether this applies to you as well. My mother had many children. I'm one of 10 children, which is thousands of them. And in those 10 children, they're mostly boys, but there's two girls. And what fascinated me the most is that my mother only taught these aspects of witchcraft to the girls. Why? I never asked her. I mean, she is long dead, but if I called her down from spirit, although I do tend to cry when I speak to my mother in spirit because I'm so happy to see her. Uh, so I don't call her very often because it distresses both her and me. Um, so I, I've never asked her why she only taught the girls. And I suspect it's because this was a female craft, very much a female craft in her eyes. It would no more have occurred to my mother to teach her sons witchcraft than it would for her mother, my grandmother, to teach her sons witchcraft. It's not something that you did. Witchcraft is women's intuition. And I think they believe witchcraft to be the ability, which is a female heavy ability in their eyes, to manipulate energy. So, and I think that's the reason why they didn't teach their sons. And I have ended up as this fourth generation witch. I mean, of course, I don't necessarily hold this view myself that it's only for the females, but there was an incredibly strong female line only. And this is shown by my mother teaching her female children only the secrets of the craft. But she did it in a very, in, she did it in an incredibly organic way. You know, she would teach me to tie my shoelaces and cast a circle. She would teach me to, you know, when you move into a house, you always blessed your house. And this is how you did it, showing me how to ward. And so I learnt these things without really realising it. And that is one of the joys of it. I mean, it was part of my life. You know, so as I grew up with this, I just presumed that that's what everybody learned. And it was when I was in my 20s, I think, that I realised that this wasn't the norm. It was just my family, or the only family that I knew. I'm sure there's other families plenty out there. Uh, and I'll tell you the story of the grandmother's assault. It's uh, when I was about three, I found my grandmother's pot and it was a big stoneware jar of table salt that she used for cooking. And I picked it up in my three-year-old way and carried it outside and started flinging the salt about all over the place because I enjoyed the feel of the salt, you know, running through my fingers and splattering on the leaves of the bushes. It was most satisfactory to my three-year-old brain. My grandmother takes one look at me from the kitchen window, runs out hell for leather down to the bottom of the garden. Jenny! Jenny, what are you doing? And I think, oh no, I'm in for it. She's going to absolutely tell me off hell for leather because I'm throwing salt all over the garden. And she was like, you can't possibly do that. Quick, take some salt in your right hand. Take a pinch of salt. Take it now and throw it over your left shoulder. And she forced me to do that three times because she says that salt can call in the, you know, bad jujis around the place and you don't want the devil in your garden. And that's why throwing salt over your shoulder three times, as superstition it may be to you, was very much, we're going to keep the devil away for me. It is only now that I am sort of grown up and more knowledgeable of the world that I realise that not everyone is like this. However, there is plenty of you out there who are, who have these superstitions or, you know, family traditions and practices that you will have been shown by your parents in order to prevent bad stuff happening to you. And this is witchcraft. And more than that, it's traditional witchcraft.
People have learnt their rituals and their craft through generations of other people showing them how. I mean, nowadays, with the advent of social media, one of the great things is that we can bring all these rituals together because each of them have different aspects in them, which will help us all learning the craft. Because witchcraft is essentially just the manipulation of energy. That's all it is. You're changing energy. As every single thing has energy in this world, from a, oh look, I've got a lighter for my candles here, that has energy, it's got lighter energy, to a pen, that's got pen energy. We can manipulate these energy and change them. And this is how we create the craft. My traditional witchcraft, although I learned it at my mother's knee, is the knowledge that everything has energy and that you can change the energy however you want to. The rituals that you practice are cultural. So different cultures will have different ways of casting a circle, for example. You know, if you look at the Neolithic circles in the UK, the stone circles that we've got, these are all drawn in a completely different way to the circles that I will draw now. Casting a circle for a particular purpose. The Mesopotamians and the Aztecs, the Minoans, all were adept at casting circles, as were, and this is going to possibly surprise a few of you, Native Americans. The teepee in a circle is not by accident. It is one of the strongest, and you can say, oh, well, they, they, blah, 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 we just built them like that. No, we didn't. All our first houses are built circular, and it's because we have a natural affinity to the circle because you can protect it. It's an unbroken line. There's no weak spots around it. You can trace all this back to some form of ritual and cultural witchcraft. It's not, you know, it's not rocket science. There is an element of it. And people can say to me, well, you can't prove that. No, I can't. But my intuition and my acknowledgement of the witchcraft that I practice tells me that this is so. And <laughs> You'd be a fool to deny its actual existence. It's a bit like denying that there's something more than the physical world that we live in. Added to that, you know, I talk about traditional witchcraft, but I don't really have a definition for this traditional witchcraft. It's just witchcraft that I learnt from my mother's knee, which is the manipulation of energy, as I keep saying. So you all might practice traditional witchcraft, but in your own way. You can have traditional witchcraft, the manipulation of energy, um, in your own culture, in your own style. You can make up your own spells and it's still traditional witchcraft because witchcraft is witchcraft, tradition or not. And believe you me, I have actually been studying this for a long time. I'm quite clever and I know a lot about it. You know, I have made my own investigations and I'm, I spend quite a lot of time teaching people how to learn that for themselves because learning traditional witchcraft is not necessarily about reading books. It's actually about practising it. And that's the most important. The more practicing of witchcraft that you do, the better at it you'll get. It is a bit like teaching someone art or in a musical instrument. They will paint their art in their own particular style. They will play that musical instrument in their own fashion. You will practice your witchcraft in your own style, in your own culture, in your own fashion, and it will still be very much traditional. I can facilitate that. If you want to know, go to patreon.com and join the coven. That's basically a group learning facility for everyone. So I do recommend it. I'll have you really empowered after one session, I promise. But I'd be interested to hear your stories, how you consider yourself a traditional witch. Do you practice witchcraft in a different way? How do you interpret that in your culture? I would love to know. So please do leave me a comment below. And otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe. The subscribers enable me to continue making these videos. And so thank you. Thank you so much. You're great. And I will see you in a week or so, depending on how busy I am. Ostara is coming up and I'm quite busy on Ostara. Let's hope so. Hopefully I'll see you next week.